Okay, this is going to be to get VS Code I'm working with Godot, including debugging for C Sharp today. Uh, the difference between VS Code I'm and Visual Studio Code is uh, that VS Code I'm is the open source uh, project Visual Studio Code is based off of, and there may be you know a number of reasons someone might want to use this. Uh, first one might be your feelings for Microsoft are less than ideal. <laughs> In particular, if you don't want to help train Copilot with the telemetry they take off of you, or what have you. So first, uh, obviously, the thing to do is going to be install it um, on Linux, which I'm running. Uh, there's a package, VS Codium, right here. That'll install it into your binary directory. So before we set up the debugging, first we need to set up Godot to use uh, VS Codium as the editor. So after it's been installed, of course, we're going to go up to Editor Settings here. So you can type it in up here if you want to find it faster, like so, whatever. Uh, but under text editor, external here, you're going to check this to on and point to the path. So again, on Linux, this is the default location, like for executables, user, binary, uh, codium instead of code, basically. And these flags, these execute flags, just tell it um, how to open it and where to go in the file that you're looking at. Um, in the Godot documentation, uh, we have the external editor documentation. I'll link that as well. Um, you're going to follow the same information here as you would for Visual Studio Code, and then it should work just fine. The only other thing to remember is you can get it in both places. So for .NET specifically, it has uh, an editor uh, field here uh, down at the very bottom. Uh, so go to Custom and do the same thing here. Point it to Codium and uh, put the same flags in there. I uh, want to mention this VS Codium Marketplace. Now, I don't know if this is in uh, all distributions repositories, but uh, this will enable the Microsoft Marketplace so that from within Codium, you can install the stuff from Microsoft Marketplace. And what would be relevant to this tutorial is you could actually install their dev kit here. If you don't install that Marketplace package, uh, extensions like this will not show up in uh, VS Codium, but you can go here, download the VSIX file, which is the extension, and manually install it. I'll show how to do that for anyone who wants to do that. But the focus is going to be on the uh, Open C Sharp uh, extension, which is this one. Now, there's an update literally a couple of days ago that made the debugging workable in this free extension. So you can see right here, this says last release June, first. Um, it hasn't been put up on the OpenVSX marketplace yet. So right now you do still have to download the extension from the uh, repository in order to get the most up-to-date version, but as soon as this gets updated you can just install it directly from here. So this is the repository, free VS Code C Sharp. Um, you're going to go down here to releases and this is what you're going to be able to check to. Like when you look you need at least this version. Uh, you just download this VSIX file and we're going to install directly from there. So I'm not going to click install here again because I need the latest version to install one manually. Uh, you hit control shift and P and I already have it here but you can probably just type extensions uh, but you're looking for this install from VSIX and I'll bring this over here. So here you see C sharp platform neutral blah 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 that's the file we want. So actually yeah this last update just is when I installed it, it looks like but up here you can see 2.34.12 that's the version we need. Next, we need to create a uh, launch.json file and a tasks.json file. So this .vs code folder up here, you want to expand that. If you already have a launch.json uh, and a tasks.json, you can just edit them if they're there. But just to show the process, I'm going to delete them. And I'm going to take a quick look at the Godot documentation while we do this. So we're going to follow the instructions for Visual Studio Code with some caveats because I believe this is designed for GDScript in Visual Studio Code and uh, that doesn't cover the C-sharp angle at all. But um, this, just to get a general idea here, um, we're going to create that task file. So you can go that same menu, Control shift p and go to Configure Task. And as always, read the Godot documentation backwards. Down here it'll tell you if there's no such uh, option up here. You might already have the file. So if you haven't already created a file there, um, we have tasks configure task, that's fine, but that won't appear if you already have a task JSON over here, which is a little weird or sneaky, whatever. So you'll see here in the instructions that it says to pick others right here, but again, they're doing it for the GDScript version of Godot, not uh, the C Sharp version. So we need to modify what we're doing here. But we can go here, you can type this in if it's not up at the top like this, just type in tasks and find configure task. Uh, create from a template and .NET Core is what is actually being used for C Sharp so that will give us much closer to what we're after in this case. I think this will even work right out of the box actually. 
So another thing you'll notice is up here, it'll say you need the C or C++ extension installed. Again, that's not true for C Sharp uh, because we're not building the engine to get the GD script, essentially. Like all the scons, you could ignore that. So like it says here, if, uh, if the launch JSON file is missing, you'll be prompted to create a new one. So here you can go run and debug and, you know, find JSON with comments. I don't know what that's all about, but you could just go right here, create a launch JSON file. And again, if you have the Godot extension, you might see this like GD script. We're not after that. Uh, same thing here. We can go to the .NET for the template. Most of this stuff is gratuitous, I'm pretty sure. I am going to link Fine Point CGI's video on getting Visual Studio Code working in general. Uh, he does an excellent job of, you know, explaining this and basically you don't need it. I think it's essentially giving you a warning that, you know, it didn't recognize Godot's project files or something. But get rid of all that. That makes it a little clearer. So just to kind of explain what's going on here, um, this pre-launch task build, that's going to refer to the build, the label you put here, um, and run this task. So that's just building the project before it launches every time. And we're using .NET to do the building again because it's a C-sharp project in our case. This is nothing but the name that's going to show up in your run and debug right here. But anyway, this is just to show the format that it spits out. Like you can really just um, copy what I'm going to show anyway. So all you really need, I'm going to paste it in here is this. I think the most uh, significant difference is this pipe transport. I th this is essentially you're piping through this program to a shell. I don't understand all that, but uh, the point being is you're going to point to your Godot executable here, and this is the default location typically when it gets installed from the Godot package in the repository, but if you have it uh, put someplace else, you'll want to manually update this. You don't actually need these. These are Godot's arguments, not C sharps or .NETs rather, uh, so you could actually get rid of those entirely. That's just to be minimal, let's do that. Where I actually got this from is uh, this person here who uh, put in the pull request th that made this possible. The only difference is you do not want to put in this dash E because that's Godot's argument to open the editor and not run the project. So that won't work. It just kind of opens a frozen window for you. So once again, I'm just using the Final Fantasy project. I have, you know, a, a file open here. And what I need to test is breakpoints because that's what will show the uh, working debugging. Okay, so we're going to try it out now. I have a breakpoint in the encounter controller here, so that uh, should stop us right here at this breakpoint as soon as we get into a battle. Uh, so I'm going to hit run and debug. You'll see I have this global's overworld input enabled. I added it to the watch list, so we should be able to see that value. Uh, I'm going to bring it over here to the monitor now and get myself into a fight, hopefully. Here we go. Uh, so here, great, it stopped. Um, there's the spot we expected. Uh, now we see this is false. That variable is to disable moving the character around while you're in the battle, because I don't want the input to do the same thing in battle. And that should be false, that makes sense. And what's really nice is I think you can add them live, which I don't think was always a thing. Uh, so let's try the black image variable. There you go, that's the variable right here above it. So yeah, you can see it's a godot.sprite2d, that's the type. Uh, and you can see very, uh, you know, all the values and uh, attributes associated with it. Awesome.